Hey, what's going on, everybody? If this is your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbit, I'd like to say welcome. If it's not your first time tuning in to Tim's Tidbit, I still want to say welcome and give you a nice hearty well, thank you for always pulling up and hanging out with us here at Tim's Tidbit. And you are now in tune to Mama, I Want to Trade. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Mama I Want to Trade, the series where I break down the different ICT concepts that I trade on a daily basis in the way that I understand it in the hopes of helping someone get their aha moment. Um, this is part two of the series where we're going through the price action. If you have not seen part one of the series, the lingo uh, playlist, Please see that. That is a prerequisite before looking at this series. Um, but without further ado, let's switch over to the split screen and get into the next PDA, which is, drum roll please, the order blocks. Yes, sir, the order blocks. So now, for those who haven't <laughs> looked at the lingo playlist or those who have looked at it and just don't remember because it's been a while since I posted at least a few weeks let's go and see what an order block is in accordance to let Timmy Rogers to get the full definition or just to see order blocks in their full glory please um, tune into ICT's um, order block theory videos. There's several order block theories. So tune into his order block theory videos on his core content to get it in its full glory. Or just go back and play the order block video that I made in the lingo section. Now, let's get into it. The order blocks. This is the first PDA that I deemed the breadcrumbs of price action. So the order block is a reference point. It is not an imbalance. This is our third reference point. We have seen two imbalances, and now this is our third reference point PDA that we're seeing, and it's the order block. And I called it the breadcrumbs of price action because this was the first one where I noticed that, hey, the algos are leaving little breadcrumbs to know where to come back to in the form of, you guessed it, order blocks, right? So... Let's see what Let Timmy Rogers interprets ICT definition of an order block as, right? Let's read it together. When price trades to a support or resistance level at A, then it's met with heavy contrarian distribution at B, then the high or the low of the down close or up close candle is violated at C, that constitute a order block. Well, Tim, you said a whole bunch of stuff that I do not understand. <laughs> Let's see if we can clarify it, right? So here's A, right? When price trades to a support level, we're coming down to what? A support level. This support level can be a prior low. It can be a fair value gap. It can be another order block any type of support true support when price trades down to it or up to it in another case right it can come to it it can trade through it but when it gets to that price level that price support or price resistance right you get heavy contrarian liquidity heavy distribution in the opposite direction right so boom we got heavy distribution we come to a level of support and we get heavy distribution right see candle b right there big distribution this next candle big distribution but when the high of this down close candle right here when it came to support is violated with that heavy distribution that constitutes that as a order block right there that's your that's the violation of the high right there at c that's what that line is for now hopefully that under explained it a little bit better but let's go find it in price action shall we now we're looking for a bullish order block right we're looking for a bullish order block so here we go we're looking see if you can find it see if you can find it i'm gonna give you time to look for it now where am i looking for it at it is in this area somewhere over here, right? It's several ones there, but the one I'm looking for is in this area right around here. See if you can find it. See if you can find the one I'm looking for before I put the annotations on the screen in three, two, one. Did you find it? Did you find it? 
Did you find it? Did you find it? <laughs> so let's read it together, right? Price trades to an area of support. In this case, it's a bullish order block, right? It trades down to this bullish order block right there. That's an area of support. Price comes down to an area of support, right? And then price rallies with heavy distribution. This big candle here, ping out. We got the ping out. See how the price rallying with heavy distribution right there. Ping out. It go up, right? Then we get the high is violated right there. And see here, remember I was telling you in one of the other videos where when you got consecutive candles, consecutive candles, you have to take into account you know what I'm saying? The consecutive candles, right? You can you can choose to focus solely on the last down close, but you also have to take into account if there are consecutive candles because that's all going to play as part of the order block, just like the mitigation block, just like the breaker. You know, breakers and mitigation blocks, um, they start, they can start from order blocks. Order blocks can turn into breakers or mitigation blocks. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, right? And like I said, um, violating the high of the last down close candle um, of the price leg that creates the order block, right? And let's put the order block on the screen. Boop! There you go. Going from the highest body to the lowest body on the consecutive candles. That's your order block once the high is violated and you see price eventually trades back down into the order block. In this case, it did get back down all the way to the lowest um candle but you still have to take into account the bodies of the consecutive candles now one more time for anybody that we may have lost coming back right price price comes it trades up comes down to an area of support right which is in this case is a bullish order block right rallies with heavy distribution when the breaking market structure of the high of the um, order block, when we have the violation of the high, the breaking market structure, now that qualifies this as an order block, potential order block, because of that heavy distribution coming from an area of support. So when the price eventually trades back down into it, boop, taps it there, and then it rallies again. That's the bullish order block. Now, let's go see the bearish order block right now the bearish order block giving you time to find it giving you time to look for it the one that i'm looking for here in this area right here that i'm looking for it did you pause the screen did you find it getting ready to put the annotations on in three two one there you go so price price trades up price price trades to an area of resistance in this case it's a bearish fair value gap right here's the bearish fair value gap right here right candle one and candle three don't share price so price trades up to a bearish fair value gap right met with head price sales off with heavy distribution right once price sells off with heavy distribution the last up close candle also remember what i said about the consecutive candles you will have to take that into account but since this is a nice beefy candle i'm going with the last up close candle because it's a nice beefy candle but you still have to take that into account right and then um once the viol once the 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 low of that candle is violated that constitutes that to be an order block and that's your order block right there. That's your bearish order block. And as you see, price eventually trades back up into it. And if you see here, the bodies of the candles are also respecting the, the lowest um, candle of that order block too. You always have to take into account all of the consecutive candles, right? All of the consecutive candles. You always want to take that into account for any um, order block mitigation block breaker if it's consecutive candles you always take that into account now let's go back one more time for anybody that we may have lost right price comes down and then it trades back up to an area of resistance in this case it's a bearish fair value gap right there price, tr price trades up to the bearish fair value gap and then is met with heavy distribution 
after hitting that resistance point. Heavy distribution, you break through the low of the candles, you broke the low of the lowest um, consecutive green, you broke through the lowest of the last um, up close candle, right? And then once that is once that happens, that qualifies this to be a um, order block. Now remember to take into account the consecutive candles, but since this is a nice beefy candle here, I always go with the beefy candle alone, but I still consider what's going on with the consecutive candles. Now let's place the annotations back on, as you see, and place in the order block. You see price eventually comes back to the order block and sells off. So that's your bearish order block. Hopefully I did not confuse anyone. Uh, feel free to uh whoa <laughs> feel free to run this back as many times as you need to um or feel free to go to ict's video covering order blocks um to see it in its full glory um again man thank you for tuning in to another episode of mama i want to trade hey and i see y'all in the next one man gone